Hello, everybody. My guest today is Nicholas Dusain. He's a co-founder and CEO of a company called Algolia, the leading search and discovery API for websites and mobile applications. Launched in 2012, the company now is used by over 5,800 companies around the world. Before Algolia, Nicholas spent over 12 years working on information retrieval at Exilad and Thales. All right, uh, Nicholas, are you ready to take us to the top? Yes, thank you for having me, Nathan. You bet. So I'm hoping a lot of my audience has maybe seen your actually search tool kind of across some of their favorite websites. But for those that have not used you before, tell us what you do. Yeah, so we, we basically help developers of uh, website apps like Medium, Twitch, Under Armour, and many others uh, power their internal search. So if you search on any of these companies, uh, you, basically, you are basically using us behind the scene. That's great. And what's the business model? Is it a kind of a pure play SaaS company or how do you monetize? Uh, pure play SaaS. It's uh, only in the cloud. Uh, so it's only subscription based. Um, we are going to have customers from like long tail of developers that are going to self-serve on the service. Uh, we start at $35 a month. And we are going also to have up to bigger enterprises uh, that can use us. But we're speaking more of like upper six-figure deals uh, per year there. Yeah. Um, Nicholas, this is going to be a tough question because your customers are so spread out. But just because mm -hmm. we are short on time, if I forced you into an average, what would you say the average customer pays you per month? Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be to look at the average. Uh, long tail, it's pretty small. I don't have enough quick uh, numbers there. Are you more focused the, uh, on long tail or enterprise? Enterprise is 80% of our business today. Okay. Revenue, let's say that 5% of our customers are going to bring about 80% of their revenue. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let me ask the let me re ask the question in your enterprise cohort. I mean, are we talking you know a thousand bucks a year, ten thousand, a million per year? Generally speaking, what's ACV there? Uh, we're close to six figures uh, in the range, like eighty to one hundred k. Okay, and the reason I ask that is because I want to understand. You know, that's obviously a high enough price point where you can afford to put some touch on the sale. Do you have an internal sales team built out? Uh, we do, we do. So we have like two go to market. Uh, mm -hmm. One is the self serve side long tail of developers. One is a really more uh, higher touch, sales-driven, very typical SaaS model. We have a team that is split in different segments, SMB, mid-market, enterprise, uh, with all the supporting functions from sales development to SDRs, BDRs, that are helping, uh, helping create more pipeline for the upmarket. And what's the ratio of how many SDRs responsible for how many AEs? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not uh, leading the sales. It's about uh, if I group SDRs and BDR together, we're speaking about one uh, between one and uh, one for one, one for two. Uh, one SDR for supporting leads yeah. and demos for two AEs or BDRs? Yes. yes. Interesting. And how do you, I won't go too much deeper here, but I am curious, do you set them like they have to like cold email a certain number per, per month or per day or, or set up a number of demos? Like what, what metric do you build around those roles? Uh, we really look at the bottom line here. It's more pipeline generated. Uh, when we look at SDRs and PTRs, uh, that's the most important for us. So we also look at the number of meetings. I mean, there is a lot of metrics we're looking at. Uh, but at the end of the day, what matters is how much uh, dollar, dollars we can close and get in the bank. Yep. Uh, so pipeline is the, the, the metric I'm looking at mostly on my side. And what did you say total team size? What, add, add everyone together? Uh, you mean sales or like every, everybody on your on everyone in the company? Uh, three hundred. Okay, three hundred. Uh, yeah, over five offices today. Okay, great. So, so spread out. San Fran is headquarters. San Fran headquarters. We started in Paris. So we have a big team in Paris. All our engineering is uh, is there, uh, and we have sales offices in uh, London, New York, and Atlanta. Oh, very good. Okay, and then you mentioned or in the in the intro, you launched in twenty twelve. So over the over the past six months, how many logos have you grown to? How many paying customers? Uh, we're about 6,000 customers right now. Oh, great. Uh, exactly the last six months, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, but uh, but yet, 6,000 today, we're pretty much doubling year over year. The, the, sorry, pretty much what? Uh, doubling. Oh, doubling year over year. That's great. And then you said about 5% of those are actually enterprise. So about 300 enterprise and the rest kind of long tail. Yeah, yeah, that makes that's, that, that's, that a good approximation. Yeah, that makes good sense. And then, I mean, I can kind of back into this, right? If you said kind of your enterprise ACVs are getting close to that six-figure mark, that would put you somewhere around kind of 2.5 million today, and that's just 80% of your revenue. That's monthly. Is that generally accurate? Uh, we, we're always looking at, uh, at the yearly thing. Uh, yes, that's pretty much the, the right ballpark. Okay. Uh, we, we crossed the, so we crossed the 20 million ARR 
uh, milestone last year, and and pretty like we're going to close close to double this year. So we're going to be over 40 million this year. That's great. Um, do you need these last 30 days to really get over the 40 hump or you're already over 40? Uh, we're, we always want to get more. So <laughs> we always need the last few days to get even more. Yeah. And, and as you know, the holidays are a great forcing function to close your pipeline. Uh, yeah, I think the end of the quarter is the most important closing function for the, the team. Uh, because that's so important. I mean, you know how that works for sales. Of course. Uh, they have uh, like 50% of their comp that is the commission. And so, of course, uh, they have the motivation, the right motivation to close uh, as much as they can before the end of the quarter. That's right. Um, talk me through uh, funding history. I think you have raised. How much total have you raised? 74 million. And why did you decide? I mean, obviously, once you're on that path, you have to kind of stay on that path. But why Why couldn't you bootstrap this? Oh, we could. Uh just wouldn't be the same company today. Uh, for us, it's more about like achieving the highest potential. I mean, the company has a high potential. It would be such a shame not to give it our best. And in our case, in our market, for us, it meant uh, raising money to be able to go faster. Yep. And, um, you know, one of the things that can limit growth sometimes is churn. Um, how do you think about churn today and how do you keep it low? Uh, it's a lot around uh, making sure we're, we are delivering the right product to our customers and making them successful. Um, and so it's as we as we scaled, we started to add uh, customer success for the market deals, for example. But if I look back at the early days, our users are developers, uh, really were implemented by developers. And so we decided very early not to have any support team, for example. Because we wanted to make sure everyone in the company was user facing and really felt the need and the pain of the customers. So support was done by engineers. Mm -hmm. So our customers, when they had an issue, they would directly reach out to our engineers. And that was an expectation we set from the day from day one with the engineers, which means that the product got way better, I think, that it would have if we had a support team dedicated. Well, Nicholas, let me role play with you right now. Nicholas, I, you just hired me as a senior engineer. You're paying me like 180 grand in San Francisco, and you want me to answer support tickets? Well, I don't want to answer support tickets. Uh, actually, yes, you should. <laughs> no, I, I hate the role pacing, but no, I think that's very important to have uh, engineers who really care about the product they build and about the customers they serve. You know, actually, it's such a satisfying feeling when uh, your customers have an issue and you're able to solve and help them. And see and receive that thanks, that uh, like really uh, heartfelt uh, thanks from the customers. I think that's why it's a good thing. It's all a matter of proportion. You don't want to spend your days at doing that, but spending half a day, two two half days a month uh, answering support is actually a great. Is thing. that how you structure it? Each engineer has to spend basically one whole day per month on support. Yes, yes. and uh, and as we speak, we're actually creating a support team now dedicated support team, uh, mostly to be able to do 24 seven support and have a higher quality of support and response time. That's great. Uh, but we still ask our engineers to participate to that. Yeah. Uh, so and maybe that way is going to reduce a little, but still going to be there. And how effective has this been? So what, what actually is your churn per year today? Uh, so we don't communicate about the churn, but let's say that the most important here is really to have a net negative churn, uh, which we have. You know, for SaaS businesses, you always uh, try to look at both the dollar churn and the dollar upgrades uh, from existing customers. So what you want is to retain, uh, to have an increase in the retention of dollar. Yeah. Expansion, expansion more than makes up for what you lost. Customers at the end of the year. Oh, sorry, good. Yes, exactly. Which means that part of the, when you start a year, that's the magic of the beauty of the SaaS business, you start the year, you already know that you are going to have more revenue that new year than the year before without even acquiring any new customers. Nicholas, what do you, when you put those performance together, what do you assume, if so, I'm going to make this up. If someone starts paying you 10 grand per year today, what do you, what can you predict in year two they're going to increase that contract value to typically? Uh, so it's going to depend about the segment industry and so on, but basically you can expect them to pay about 30% more the next year. Okay. So about 30% expansion annually and more importantly than the number is how you're doing that. So, you know, folks that grow very quickly set up very specific pricing axes to give their sales team leverage to drive upsells. What pricing axes are most effective for you? Uh, 
so there's like two aspects here. There is the the usage itself. Uh, users using more, uh, like growing by themselves, so they have more things to search for. They have more users that are querying the, the service. And the second axis is more on features, value-based features. A, you want to add personalization in your search, then that's a new product, a new module, a new add-on that you'd like, uh, yeah, that you'll have to pay for. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so it it's literally um, more more website impressions, doing more searches on Under Armour, so usage, uh, or whatever your customers are. Uh, and also, uh, I mean, is there a seat model or an additional kind of product add-on modules as well or no? No, there is, a, there is no seat model. So it's mostly usage. And then we are going to have plans. And some features are including only in specific plans. And I so see. you need to go to the next plans to have access to them. I see. Um, and since you didn't want to talk about churn numbers specifically, totally okay with that. In terms of net retention with that 30% expansion, does that more than make up for your gross yes. revenue churn? So you're above yeah, 100%? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you are above 100%, okay. like largely above 100% retention. Uh, it's uh, it's between like, I mean, retention is going to end up between 120, 125, depending of like, uh, depending of the year, depending of the segment, but that's basically it. So no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very... Uh, uh, it's a healthy business. Yeah, it's great. Hey, look, if you have 100, 120% net retention annually, and again, 30% of that, uh, that is expansion, that means you, you're only losing call it five, <laughs> five, 10% per year, right? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's uh, all of that is like a ballpark. Yeah, of course, of course. All right, so uh, 300 folks, San Fran Remote, last questions here about growth. So uh, in order to get, let's, let's use a $10,000 ACV as an example. My purpose of this question is to get in your head in terms of how aggressive you're being. So to get a new $10,000 ACV account, what are you willing to spend on CAC? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, at the end of the day, you want to spend well less. Uh, it, it, it's, it's so difficult to answer that question because it depends on the segment. Uh, we go from self-serve, where the CAC is basically nothing, like close to zero, uh, to enterprise, where the CAC could be in the in, in the like uh, at least five years number, like if you factor all the cost of the people, the sales, the marketing and everything. So it can go pretty high. So it's all over the place. At the end of the day, what you want is a, a great ratio where your CAC is way lower than your LTV. Your first year ACV? Uh, first year ACV and LTV, of course. Well, of uh, course, LTV, so definitely yeah, LTV. Yeah, yeah. But but I mean, how uh, aggressive though, uh, How aggressive though are you being in year one? I mean, are you getting paid back in three months typically or 10 months or 12? No, no, no we're close to one year. Uh, okay. But yes, uh, like uh, the... the, the uh, the payback, uh, like how long does it take to pay it back? Uh, if you stay under one year, it's very easy. Yeah, that's great. Makes a lot of sense, Nicholas. Um, last question here before we wrap up. Uh, any plans to raise additional capital here as the year closes out? Uh, of course, but not this year. And you want to wait till next year? Yeah, it's going to be ne- like probably next year. Sometime next year, we'll raise a new round. And why is that timing right for you? Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a combination between uh, when will we need the cash? Uh, the potential of growth and the potential of growth. So, of course, you never want to rise when you have your back on the wall and uh, don't have any more money in the bank because you cannot really control. You don't have any leverage here. Yeah. You have to raise. And then it's a question of potential. If we believe we can, we are building the plan for next year. And uh, of course, we want to continue to grow very fast. And the faster you grow, the more cash you need uh, to make that possible. Yeah. So it's uh, really uh, looking at the these two factors and making and find your right timing. And if you do raise next year, about how much do you think you'd probably end up raising? Uh, I, I prefer not to communicate that because that's actually still under discussion to see exactly how much we would need. But let's say that at any point of time, my goal is to have uh, an option uh, to become profitable. Uh, I would never want to yeah, have my back on the wall. So uh, how much does that mean? It's basically a, it's basically a mass problem. Except quite cheap. It's a helpful answer. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, Radical Candor. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, I'm looking a little more at uh, Reed Hoffman today. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Reed Hoffman. Oh, the, Reed, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I love his, uh, actually his podcast. Uh, Masters, Masters of, of scale. scale. Yeah, it's kind of like we're in that uh, stage yeah. with the company. Uh, number three, what billing tool do you guys use? Billing tool. Uh, we built our internal billing system on top of Stripe. Okay, got it. Uh, number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, about seven. Okay, and what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Married, three kids. Oh, wow. Okay, and how old are you? 
Uh, I'm 42. 42. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, 20 years old. Um, optimize for learnings uh, instead of anything else. Guys, Optimize for Learning founded Algolia back in 2012. They did call it 20 million bucks in AR last year, more than doubled this year with 40 million bucks in sight, serving over 6,000 customers ranging from long tail and then embedded in that about 300 enterprise customers. Those 5% of our customers make up more than 80% of their revenue. So definitely a model there. They're doubling down on with a sales team, you know, inside sales team prospecting, things like that. 300 people based between San Fran and four other offices. In terms of payback, you know, willing to spend up to 12 months of AC CV to acquire the customer. Obviously, that actual number different, you know, is different by cohort. Uh, in terms of retention, over 120% net revenue retention annually. Coming, a lot of that's coming from a 30% expansion year over year on that same cohort. So really healthy growth. Thank you so much, Nicholas, for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan.